my name is Hans Lombardo. I am the CMO of BlockPass. BlockPass is a blockchain-based self-sovereign identity portal for regulated industries and the internet. So it's, um, th it's designed to, uh, in its in initial phase, to provide identity for humans, but ultimately our platform will provide identity for devices, objects, and companies. So just to let you know um, what is self-sovereign identity, it's very much about user control identity in the internet of everything. And um, it's basically about giving users control over their identity in this sort of perilous universe that is the internet of everything. So how did we get here? Well, the internet of everything is a perilous universe because we have, as you know from previous speaker, um, as you from the news, there's a rise of billions of connected are not known. People don't know what, you know, how, how actually, how expansive this sort of new universe of devices is. And there's also the coming AI. Basic principle is that humans, companies, uh, objects, and devices are all entities in the Internet of Everything. The key control this universe because it's it's the perilousness comes from the fact that devices can be used and botnets in many different ways to uh, cause harm to networks and cause harm to critical systems and. What we believe is that the blockchain can be used as a security and identity layer uh, for devices um, and humans. And the basic principle is that identity of humans, companies, and objects and devices is key because the underlying principle is that humans and machines that know each other work, work together more harmoniously, work together better. So. If uh, a human can be identified, if a device can be identified, and that uh, identity is impregnable, then it's a safer world, it's a safer universe. Um, so in the terms of human identity, it's very key to understand that right now, human identity on the internet is not self-sovereign, it's very centralized. So we progress from a non-controlled identity um, system to a self-sovereign identity system. The principle of self-sovereign is, if you think about sovereignty, you know, it's sort of a historical and political context, but really it means control of. So self-sovereign is that humans control their identity, not companies, not central governments, humans themselves and users themselves control their own identity. But right now, um, most identity on the internet is centralized. Most online, online identities are currently centralized. Um, this results in a identity um, data being siloed and fragmented across disparate online services, websites, and U users do not own their I digital identities and have little control over them. And this is uh, a, a, a really problematic if you think about it, because this includes identity data and some examples of where identity data has been misused. If you look at Equifax and what happened with Equifax, over half the US population's identity data was uh, hacked and exposed. And this is controlled by an organization that didn't get have permission to get that data necessarily. So it didn't go to the users and ask them for that data. So then there's also federated identity, which is a little more decentralized. At the same time, it allows a person to use the same credentials to log into multiple services. For example, you um, go to a service and you want to sign up for a service, and it says, sign up with your Google ID, or sign up with your Google account, sign up with your uh, Facebook account. The problem with that is, is it's federated. That means something happens to Facebook, something happens to Google, um, you have tr uh, problems logging into those services. Not only that, ultimately you're giving over control of your data to Facebook and Google. 
So it does not resolve the underlying issue that person's digital controlled by and can be revoked by the service provider. Uh, once again, this can uh, result in user losing access to other services. And this becomes more problematic for users as more and more services uh, rely on fully or uh, fully on federated identity services. And a, a third um, more decentralized um, form of identity is user-centric identity. This is fully portable, user controlled, secure ide digital identity based on certain formats that include OpenID, um, op open OAuth, and FIDO. But it still falls short of independence and freedom. And I say independence and freedom, independence and freedom for your, your identity. And that the user still doesn't control the service, application, or website provider and ultimately they de depend on these providers uh, for their digital identity. The ultimate goal is self-sovereign identity, and that is the user um, control, control over their identity. The security and integrity of the uh, digital identity is um, ensured. There's no unauthorized access, as in the case of Equifax, to identity and identity data. They must be able to trust the t integrity of the data as well, that and sovereign, ultimately, users must be able to use the digital identities to identify themselves without seeking permission from or being uh, uh, from a service provider. Ultimately, what BlockBass is, is a platform for self-sovereign identity. This is what we're trying to achieve in that the user controls the has their identity data. Actually, on our platform, other than what the user has in the phone. So it is as the blockchain is is uniquely um, uh, qualified or uniquely characteristic that make it um, uh, good to be good for for a registry or a whitelist because of its immutable nature, meaning that blockchain you cannot destroy data once the data is on the blockchain. So in the case of BlockPath, personal data control. Space zero dollars proof this model is for this uh, identity application. And the use cases that we're seeing right now are in the blockchain ecosystem is that um, there is a need for uh, identity verification so that um, we can uh, we can uh, reduce the, the significant barriers that um, in financial services more there is more um, KYC that needs to be done know your customer customer anti-money laundering sort of um, a verification that needs to be done for uh, users to be onboarded to financial services, and it's ex growing extremely expensive for financial services to do that. So, platform that BlockPass is will, uh, will facilitate onboarding customers e in an easy way. But in the same case, the users still have control. It's still user centric, and so that's the key. Um, in the case of the cryptocurrency ecosystem, there's also com a, a compliance issue in that in the past, cryptocurrencies have been uh, raising funds through anonymous, ver uh, anonymous um, investment, and this is causing problems with regulators, so BlockPass is well uh, situated to, um, to uh, provide a service where there's KYC, you know your customer verification, and anti-money laundering verification, but still gives the user control and user-centric uh, uh, control of the data and actually identity verification. As I said, there's problems with ICOs um, raising significant funds, hundreds of millions of dollars, um, with um, with no on, anonymously, and so the, there's a sort of backlash from regulators to this, so that's why uh, BlockPass is uh, really being built to 
provide a way that blockchain uh, companies, uh, blockchain-based companies, can go from a not unregulated sort of status to a regulated status. So the compliance realities um, that BlockPass are solving in financial services um, are dealing with the fact that it takes time to do the KYC process and identity verification. Um, it solves the problem of onboarding customers um, and it uh, makes it easy to switch between merchants because once you do the identity verification on BlockPass, you do it once and you don't have to do it again for at least six months because you've done it once and you can sign up to any service provider on the network, whether it's a merchant, whether it's a financial service, whether it's some other sort of techno technological service provider. Um, and also it reduces the cost of onboarding customers because the um, it's a shared infrastructure. So the merchants and service providers do not have to build their own identity verification platform. So right now there's no solution to these problems um, that presently exist. The, the, um, and so BlockPass could be well suited, well positioned to um, help blockchain businesses reduce their compliance costs, protect the, the identity and personal data of the user, and systematically address blockchain's need for reg tech and identity verification. And ultimately provide privacy in the form of identity verification system that is controlled by the user and is compliant. Um, this really sort of goes into the ID and immediate product features, uh, which will allow developers to design standard tokens that plug into BlockPass protocol. Um, Ethereum blockchain and Neo blockchain startups will be able to launch a fully compliant token into the market. Um, digital currency exchanges can sign up to the BlockPass IDN and integrate BlockPass into the into the platform. So really what I would like to talk about also is their current progress. This is an example of our app that's on um, on, the, on both Android and Apple and iOS. And we're currently integrating exchanges, ICOs, blockchain startups, fintech, regtech, insurtech, uh, traditional industries, and government platforms. We're based in Hong Kong, but we have offices in the UK as well, in London. So the future development plan is to develop the platform beyond people and humans for companies and devices to create a, a from birth of a device from the manufacturing floor. So there's a unique identifier in the device that uh, basically gives it uh, the birth certificate, a um, something to tag to and hash into the blockchain. We can provide a lifelong history of the device through the blockchain-based registry. And this will solve problems with I IOE um, because um, we will be able to establish a sort of secure conduit, conduit between humans and companies and devices through BlockPass in the Internet of Things and Internet of Everything. Um, here are uh, some uh, use cases where we um, started off with IoT, um, building IoT systems using blockchain uh, or blockchain for their identity layer and identity as well because we felt we couldn't find a, an appropriate human identity protocol that would um, work so that humans, devices, and objects, smart objects could interact in, in the internet of everything. And here's an example of a actual uh, shipping and logistics proof of concept where a container has a sensor on it, it has an identity, and it sends um, data to a smart contract which informs um, the, the status of the environment in the shipment, in the container. Um, it can inform the seller, carrier, buyer, bank of the shipper, bank of the uh, receiver, and insurance company. So if the, for example, the, if it's a cold container, the cold container fails and starts to warm up and there's a precious cargo in there, then the um, smart contract can inform all the parties involved that the, the contract has been breached. Another example, which was um, something we were working on, we were working on uh, two years ago, a decentralized autonomous utility using solar energy. It's a, a, a platform that allows for um, rent, rental of solar units, solar data logger, solar array, and 
all the parties in the in the platform have an identity, a digital identity, including the human renting it, um, the solar panel in their home, including the companies uh, uh, basically leasing it to them. And um, the idea is that eventually the user will buy the platform, buy the solar platform through by paying um, paying in increments. Now, if they fail to uh, make a, make payments, then the um, the company, the solar uh, utility, can automatically shut shut off the data logger and the um, the solar panel array and the energy energy production. So that's the idea of where um, BlockPass can be integrated into a, a sort of energy um, utility. So what we are also doing doing is we're working on zero knowledge proof tech technology. We're partnering with a UK university to be our R and D arm in zero knowledge proof. It basically allows for passwordless technology, um, knowledge is data verification, um, true trustless interaction with, between uh, user and devices, and complete self-sovereign identity for the users. So thank you very much. It just ran out of time. If you have any questions, uh, please ask. Okay. Thank you very much.